wonderful to be speaking with the uh, group of engineers. Uh, for the last uh, four and a half years, I've been a president of a uh, university that uh, has 52,000 students, and very few of them are engineers. So uh, I feel now that I am really uh, in, my, in my element. I'm the president of the second largest university in the province. Uh, the total community, if you add faculty and staff, it's uh, more than 60,000 people, so uh, I, I, I like a small group here of uh, working with engineers. Uh, so I must say that, uh, again, I feel, you, you mentioned that I, I came to Canada 35 years ago, in fact, a little correction, I came to Canada 40 years ago, actually almost to the month, I came 40 years ago to do a PhD in, uh, in engineering. And, uh, I, uh, having uh, finished my undergraduate degree in uh, my uh, home of birth uh, uh, in Egypt. Uh, and I remember when I came to Canada that everything was uh, sort of looked new and different to me. And I'm sure that many of you here as international trained engineers, many of you here must have very similar uh, feelings. But uh, I'll try and share some of my experience and uh, give uh, what, you, what you may consider a few words of advice if I can, but at least I'll tell you uh, a few things that are probably are relevant to you. I have to say that uh, one thing that happened to me very early on when I first arrived, I recognized that it was, in order for me to succeed, I really couldn't do that by just focusing on studying or important as it may. But it was very important to me to feel that I am engaged in society, that I am part of this, of this country, and I'm part of the society around me. And this has been incredibly helpful for me. I knew that uh, I, I came, I knew nothing about hockey or baseball, because where I came from, people are always interested in football, which is, I found out even it has a different name here. They call it soccer. So I had to be comfortable in the country, which is really the first thing I have to say, that it is essential that uh, one would come to a country like Canada to feel comfortable or make herself or himself comfortable in the, country, in the country. I tried very hard, frankly, to learn everything I can learn about Canada, about Canada's history, about Canada's geography, and Canada's evolution uh, as a nation. These are very important things for uh, a new professional comer to, uh, to the country. I, I wanted simply to feel part of the country. I wanted to make an impact. I wanted to make a difference. And I was determined to do everything possible in order to make this happen. Now, having done my undergraduate degree in Egypt, I know only too well about what all of you, what all of you bring in terms of engineering education. Based on my own experience for many years as an uh, as uh, internationally trained engineer myself, and as a person who was involved in engineering education, engineering research, for many years uh, in Canada, uh, based on my own experience, I would argue that engineering education and the training to become an engineer, no matter where you are from, be it Canada, Europe, Asia, Africa, anywhere in the world for that matter, that training and that education is essentially the same. Engineering courses and engineering curricula are similar, and the knowledge is equivalent in most engineering schools throughout the world. What I mean by that, that these are things that cannot be changed, that they, they don't differ based on geography or ethnic background. Engineering education is similar all over the world. And this consistency of engineering education and the common training that have helped engineers, uh, you know, particularly engineers among all of other professionals, to function and succeed in today's interconnected world. You see engineers trained in one country for working in another country. You don't see as many people in other professions doing that. And the reason for that is that their education is similar, irrespective of where they had the degree uh, from. So from my point of view, you are here, you are well trained as engineers, you are well educated uh, as, as engineers, you are very qualified and uh, you should be very proud of and of course, as a profession that involves public safety and other societal impacts, it is expected that members of the profession be knowledgeable of local national practices and codes 
and be able to operate safely in a given jurisdiction. And this is the role that bodies like PEO is responsible for in Ontario. So this is something first to give you this note that my experience, and I've been around here a long time, and my involvement in genetic education assures me that internationally trained engineers have all the academic background and qualifications required to operate anywhere in the world. Now, in terms of what's happening in Canada, all evidence indicates that the demand for engineers in Canada is increasing. In the new knowledge-based economy, we need people who can not only produce new knowledge, but also transform new knowledge into products and services to benefit society. We need people who can use their knowledge to design new products and processes that can help people improve their lives. Think about it. Innovation and productivity are key drivers in today's economy. Who can do that, that better than the engineers? The engineers were trained to become innovators, were trained to become problem solvers. Look at the incredible advances in technology, services, communication, healthcare, what have you. It's all really engineering endeavors and engineering products. Engineers are the leading innovators and the leading problem solvers in every society. And in our new knowledge-based economy, the dependence on engineers continues to increase. For Ontario and Canada to remain prosperous and to remain competitive, we need better leverage to the talent increase that will increase our ability to innovate and build the economy. And for that, I believe we need more engineers and we need to increase the percentage of our university graduates who complete their degrees in areas of applied sciences and technology. This is not just because I'm an engineer and I'm an engineer and so on. All the reports and the think tanks and the panels governments have created, whether it's the professional government or the federal government, have created in the last decade to talk about how to keep the Canadian economy competitive. All of them had the same recommendation. Increase the number, the percentage of engineers among our university graduates. So, in fact, a recent uh, report by uh, uh, TRA, that's the Toronto Regional Research Alliance, suggested that uh, GTA, the greater Toronto area, suffers from undersupply of engineers, particularly mechanical, electrical engineers. And this uh, report that was just published, published last month. I also see of uh, in, uh, signs of growing interest in engineering among young Canadians. <laughs> Over the last five years, the number of high school graduates in Ontario who applied to engineering schools increased by 30%. And this is the highest percentage increase in any discipline. That's to say our young people are also getting the sense of growing importance of engineering education and trying to join. Another indicator, and as, 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 as you heard, I've been here for 40 years, another indicator, I see more and more engineers uh, taking more leadership, senior leadership positions in the uh, in Canadian society, in industry, in businesses, and even in universities. Uh, although I, uh, I wasn't the first engineer to become president of the university, but it was unimaginable <laughs> that now there's half a dozen or more engineers who are president of universities. When I came to Canada, I think there was none. So I think people have started to realize that engineers are not only people who can uh, uh, do some calculations and design things. Engineers are trained to become problem solvers and they are needed in every discipline. So based on the, on the above, I can honestly say that your talent, your education, your knowledge is needed in Ontario and is needed in Canada. The fact that you come from many areas of the world is actually an asset, it's not a problem. And as you, you have to think of it this way. Your knowledge and training is an asset, that's for sure. But your diversity is even an added asset. Diverse perspectives are a benefit to society. They strengthen and enhance ideas. For example, at York University, as I said, we are the third largest university in the country. 
one of the incredible things I enjoy about York is the diversity of its students and, and faculty. Those 60,000 people, they can trace their background to more than 155 countries in the world. Some, of course, are born here, but they can trace their, their background to more than 155 uh, countries in the world. That's why our, I see the role of university these days is to educate people to be global citizens. And nothing will make any organization a better organization than having the ability to address issues from different perspectives. And who can do that better than a population that's diverse? So your diversity, the fact that you come from different parts of the world, is an asset. It's not a problem. So you have the education and you have another element that you bring to Canadian society. Uh, speaking of York University, again, in recognition of the importance of uh, engineering and the growing number, uh, the growing demand for engineers and the growing demand by our young people to study engineering, we are actually expanding our pre engineering program, which was particularly small. Uh, we are expanding our engineering program and building a, a larger faculty of engineering, uh, uh, thanks to $50 million investment by the provincial government. And it thanks for $25 million donation from Pierre La Santos, a, a businessman and, a, and an engineer himself, which will enable us to have massive expansion in our engineering school to make sure that we are actually on track to fulfill the needs uh, of society. And what are we trying to do in our training of the new engineers? We're trying, trying to train them to become broadly educated building on the strength of our university in areas of humanities and social sciences, what we're trying to do is actually introduce them to diverse knowledge. Because again, engineers are problem solvers. We're train, training people to be outstanding in terms of the knowledge they have in their uh, uh, now chosen area of specialization. But we want also to train them to be broader thinkers and be able to provide leadership in the future the organizations they work for, and that's exactly some of the assets that you have. <clears throat> so let me say that it is we are, I recognize, and many people obviously recognize, the importance of creating programs and opportunities to bridge internationally trained professionals into Canadian uh, uh, life and in the Canadian workplace. And uh, at York University, we have been involved in bridging programs for internationally educated professionals at a massive scale, working with small and large local businesses, not-for-profit organizations, professional association and accreditation bodies, to help professionals transition into positions that matches their education and credentials and experience here in Canada. <coughs> York University was a pioneer by having the first bridging program, which was really a bridging program for internationally trained, uh, trained nurses. Later on, we expanded that to the areas in business and in IT and information technology. And to the companies that are here today, thank you for your engagement. I know there are many companies here. Thank you for your engagement. I really commend you because I think you're doing something that is actually good for your company and it's good for the country. So, in closing, I'd like to remind all of you, all of those who are here today, fellow engineers who are, like me, professionally, uh, uh, internationally trained, do not underestimate yourself. Do not underestimate your potential contribution to Ontario and to this country. And do not ever underestimate the, the knowledge you have through studying uh, in your home universities. I know it is tough. I know it's tough given the current financial and economic situation. I've seen, I've been here 40 years, I've seen it before. I assure you of one thing, it will get better. And you'll have your opportunity. Don't lose the confidence. Don't give up hope. Educate yourself. Immer immerse yourself in society. Be part of the, of the Canadian society and I assure you, everything will fall in place naturally. Thank you for listening.